Hello, hello, hello. Let's just wait a sec. Make sure everyone can join. Just making sure this thing kicks in. Okay. You guys there? All right. Well, good Sunday. I hope you're doing well. Uh, it's Palm Sunday. We had a week left in Lent. Um, so I'm excited. Enter a very holy week for those of us who uh, who are Catholic or Christian. Um, so normally this is kind of a quiet week. And uh, I wanted to hop on because I'll tell you, uh, this is going to be another crazy week. There is no... Used to when I when I got into politics, there were like down weeks, and frankly, there were like down like multiple, like down segments when you kind of knew that it was going to be quiet. You could take a week off, you can go on vacation, you kind of check out a little. I mean, you think about this: it's Sunday night. Tomorrow, Trump's in New York. Two cases. I want to talk about that a little. Obviously, uh, the Sunday shows today. I I cannot. I continue to have my mind blown, and today was epic. Epic, and I'm going to get into that. Marjorie Taylor Greene on Friday after the House passes this minibus is what they call it in Washington. Four of the big bills, Labor, um, Department of Homeland Security, military, all combined together to fund the rest of the government. There were some Republican wins. There's no question about it. Some some good cultural things there, too. I mean, one of the things that I thought some people I know kind of asked me about was they said, what do you mean the U.S. can only fly one flag now? After this law, Biden's going to Biden signed it into law. Like the 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 left under both Obama and Biden were flying like the LGBTQ flag. Which no matter where you come down on this stuff, the idea that like we don't fly a POW flag, we don't fly a military flag, but we're flying a flag of someone's sexuality at U.S. embassies and government buildings, I, I just don't get. I, I literally, um, you know, am trying to figure that one out. Um, anyway. Um, but that was in the bill. There was some additional beds and enforcement for Homeland Security for uh, DA, CBP. Um, but we're 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 going through this exercise, and I'm I'm mixed on it. On the one hand, we have two parts of government that we don't have: the Senate. I mean, and then and then the presidency. But at some point, don't we want to? Like, isn't the fight the one you're going to lay down for? If you're if you got elected, isn't there something? I mean, you're you're willing to say, hey, we're our country's being invaded invaded and i mean we saw the video um let me see if i can get them to, to bring it up ronnie if you can um can pull that up the one of the border i don't know that we can do it right now we'll definitely have it on the show tomorrow they're literally pulling the gate down like the fence pushing back national guardsmen like they have a a right i mean like it's it's just jam the thing down and there's no there's not even any outrage on the left like here are people invading. I mean, that is an invasion. There it is. There's it there, right there. This Look at that. New video appears to show dozens of migrants. What do you mean appears to show? No, no, no. It shows that you left us at NBC. Before pushing past Texas National anything. Guardsmen struggling to contain the chaos. The migrants like, then stopped by a steel fence where officials say law I mean, this is crazy. And took like, how do you as a, there, there's no denying it. By the way, they asked Kamala Harris this on the news today on ABC this week. And they said, have you seen the video? And she said her answer, she didn't answer the question. Of course, they're not going to follow up with her because we can't, we don't do that to her. So she says, we've known for a long time that the immigration system is broken. Okay. See, look, I, this is why I want to tell you guys, there, there's a words, language, messaging thing here. You notice when the left talks about this, they say the immigration system is broken. Immigration is how you come into the country. That's the immigration system. And yes, it's broken. Border security is how you secure your border. They'll never use the word border security. They know it's not secure. They know they're not doing anything about it. So you notice their answer is always the immigration system's broken. Okay, th this, you can walk and chew gum. This border can be secure. You can focus on border security. They never get called out, do they? Um, 
And that's what I think is fascinating as far as I'm concerned. Like, you know, the, the, I, I get it. Chip Roy was pissed off today. He said that Mike, meaning Speaker Johnson, you know, didn't do his job. I get it. I mean, if you're down in Texas, not just Texas, I shouldn't say that. I'm here in Virginia. What, what are we doing? If there's not, if you're not willing to fight to protect this country, I was listening to Marco Rubio on this week. This resurgence of ISIS, number one, let's, and again, I'm like, where do I start? Number one, ISIS had been pretty much decimated under Trump. They said there were about a thousand fighters left. ISIS-K is what committed this atrocity in Russia, killing a hundred and something people. They've resurged because under Biden, when you failed to get out of Afghanistan in a way that was, that kept us, kept a foothold there. ISIS research. And, and so now Ruby is talking about all these gotaways and everyone's coming over the border. The border chief was on. Um, I, it's just, it blows my mind. The Democrats don't do it and then they don't get held accountable for it. That picture, you saw that that's an invasion. That is literally the definition of an invasion. If that was uh, any other thing in America, they'd be going nuts talking about how like we need to I don't know, whatever it is, but because it's a southern border and they know that those are voters, you know. Francisco, I get it. He says there should be a referendum about immigration in the U.S. We, they, you think they're going to allow that? These guys won't vote on it. What do you need? There shouldn't have to be. And I, I say this respectfully. Uh, there doesn't need to be a referendum. That That's like there needs to be a referendum about doing your job. This is the number one goal of any elected official of any government to protect its people. You shouldn't have to have a referendum to say, should we protect the country? I get your point. And I'm not, I'm not, don't take that the wrong way. I'm not trying to downplay your idea. I'm just saying to myself, why do we need, what, what is it that we need to do? They know it. You don't think the Democrats know this? I've, I've brought this up before. It's not incompetence. They know exactly what they're doing. They're letting these people in because they want them here. It's a fact. And I know that the left, oh, this is a great replacement theory. No, it's not. It's a fact. They've admitted it. And everything they did in that fake border immigration bill was to give them asylum. Because what happens when you get asylum? Five years and you get citizenship and you can vote. All these DACA folks that they keep saying are here through no fault of their own. They're going to do it again. Border chief estimates that 140,000 people are known gotaways. And he's like, that's just a guess. How many millions of people are we going to let into the country illegally? And you know what the Dems are going to do. They're immediately going to say, well, now they've been here for five years through no fault of their own, which it is their fault. They entered the country illegally. They didn't go through a port of entry. Um, I'm reading Bear's comment here. The American people better get off their butts and remember our second. Yeah, well, we better understand that we're in a fight for our life for this country. By the way, if you want a super chat, Go for it. Let me know. I'll read and answer your question. Um, also, if we can, take a second. Make sure you're subscribing to this channel. We are so close to 100,000 on YouTube alone. Never mind Rumble and Apple and all that other stuff. But on YouTube, it'd be so cool to be over 100,000. And that's, I get it. We're on every platform. Please subscribe to as many as you can. It's all free. It doesn't cost you a penny. Um, so. Um, Look, let me delve back for a second because this is going to be a big week. Number one, Trump's in court tomorrow, basically twice. One on the Alvin Bragg thing because so because they're pushing for a delay. Why? Because the Southern District of New York had all of these transcripts from people like Michael Cohen, and they kept them. They didn't let Trump have access, and they got discovered. So now Trump has to go through all of them and whatever. And Alvin Bragg is saying, well, I went through a bunch of them and I don't think blah, 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 blah. Unbelievable. So he's going to be here. That thing will be interesting. But then the other one, the one that the big one is the bond, right? Half a billion dollars. Who keeps it? Hold on. Let me just check the wallet here. Yep. I got about half a billion. <laughs> What's the going on? And these guys in the media are like, Trump can't come up with the cat. I'm like, who carries a half a billion dollars? My wife gets mad when she looks on the bank account. She sees a few thousand. I'm like, why aren't we investing that? Why aren't you in a higher year savings? Blah, 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 blah. 
Trump just has a half a billion dollars in cash. It'd be the dumbest investment ever. So they're going to try to liquidate some stuff. Letitia James is making clear she probably go to 40 Wall Street. I'm telling you, this is like these indictments, though. You go after Trump like this, you start seizing his assets. Pretty much guarantee a win in November. People are like, this is so much of an overreach. Um, it's a total overreach. I mean, you got to admit that, right? I mean, they're seizing, and, and here it's on appeal. And so this is the craziest thing ever. Oh, yeah, we acknowledge the appeal. There isn't even the most objective legal scholars saying that the fine is way too high and da 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 da, victimless crime, victimless crime. And yet they want to have a billion dollars. So while this is happening, you have to put up the bond. And Trump knows if you sell the property to get liquid, you'll lose the property. No one's going to sell it back to you. You're in a tough spot. The Trump, the truth social stuff, though, is going to be interesting. So he just came into it probably at least $3 billion. Not bad, huh? And if he sticks, holds on to it longer, apparently he gets more stock if it stays above a certain strike price for however long, whatever. But there's a deal where you can't sell it for like six months without approval of the shareholders. I don't know. Thanks, Ronnie. By the way, I, I appreciate you subscribing. I know you're there. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Alvin Bragg is a bum. That's right, Sunflowers. That's true. He's just trying to make it. These guys are all trying to make a name for themselves. So anyway, Trump is uh, going to have to figure out how to do this. Or are they going to start seizing the property? Now, the silly thing is the idea of the bond, at least as far as I know, is to make sure that you can pay. Well, we all know he's got the assets. There's no question about that. And he just came into another cool $3 billion. So it's not like the government's not going to get its money or the state of New York, rather, if they were, um, if they, if they ultimately prevail, which I don't think they will. They know the money's there. They could sell these things, up. but they're literally just doing this because it's him. Unreal. And the thing is, is that even if he had the cash, this goes back to this three-pronged approach that I said. First, they try to get him off the ballot. Then they go after him criminally. Then they go after him financially. They're trying to drain him. I was there in 2016. He put in his own money. Now they're basically making sure that he can't do that, right? You just bleed him. It's, I mean, you got to hand it to him. They thought about this one through. They were like, okay, Russia didn't work. Suppressing the laptop kind of worked. Let's just try this. We'll go at him full throttle. Um. Bear, Sean, here's the bigger picture. If they get the house and the legislation, that is the house and the Senate. Oh, my God. Yeah, listen. Uh, I'll come back to Trump in a minute, but you're absolutely right. I mean, you saw that, that um, Mike Gallagher, the chairman of the House Select Committee on China, congressman from Wisconsin, announced he already wasn't going to run for election. Now he's resigning mid-April. One seat majority. One seat. Now, I worked up on Capitol Hill for a while. Members of Congress have family emergencies. They get sick, travel issues. You realize, like, th this is bad enough when it's Joe Biden. If Trump doesn't have a majority in the House and the Senate, he's in big trouble. I think in the Senate, we'll be fine. They need two seats. In the West Virginia seat, Joe Manchin is not running for re-election. That's a given. So let's just call it parity because I think Republicans hold the other seats. There's, what, five other seats? Ohio, Montana, Pennsylvania, Nevada. Um, I'm missing. Wisconsin. Yeah. All in play. That would give them a one, you know, get, get them a one-seat majority. Even if, and of course, a tie works because you'd have a vice president. If a, but you don't want to have to worry about Lisa Murkowski and Susan Collins. I'm telling you, that's they would hold the place hostage. So we need to take to, to like 53. And then the House needs to get their act together. You saw Marjorie Taylor Greene announce that she going to make a motion to vacate. Now, you have to make it privileged, and then it has to come up within two days. She hasn't done that yet. It's sort of like the warning shot. I get her frustration. 
Yeah, Karen, why are so many people calling it quits? Ken Buck quit. Gallagher quit. Bill Johnson quit from Ohio. I'm sorry. Like, if you can't handle that, then don't run. It costs a lot of money. It actually costs the public a lot of money to hold the election. If you don't want the job, don't do it. And by the way, the thing that I thought, like, I've liked what Mike Gallagher has done on the um, China committee. He's been a champion holding China accountable, and we've needed that. I am. If you watch the show, hope you do, you know how much I talk about China and the threat that it poses us economically, militarily, et cetera. Mike Johnson, excuse me, Mike Gallagher of Wisconsin has been a champion holding China accountable. But when you leave early, like he's doing, you don't want to run for election. Fine. You have a right. I mean, of course you have a right. But when you quit in the middle of your term and he timed it so that Wisconsin couldn't have a special election. I'm just, that to me, you don't want to, I mean, you, you've you ensured that we're down a vote through November. In fact, through January, if there's a lame duck. That That is so disappointing. And it's, in fact, considering all the hard work that I thought he put in, that really pisses me off. And it should to you guys too. Um, so MTG put in this privilege motion, basically to put Johnson on warning. Look. We lose one more seat. The Dems are going to get control of the House. At some point, these guys need to suck it up and come together. And just say, I I'm, you know, we got to be a team. You don't have much time left. There's, there's very little else that's going to pass. But what are we doing? What image are we presenting to the American people? Now, again, I'll take it back. I, I get why she's she's upset. We should be fine. I mean, this is the border. We're being invaded. Pick your cause. Fentanyl, trafficking, terrorism, other criminals coming across the border. If you're in Congress, you're not willing to fight for that, to protect our country and stop that, then what the hell are you doing? Get out. Let someone else do it. I know you want to get home for the weekend. I get sometimes that you might cave on spending or something like that, but this is our border. And as I said, it's not all that. Just think about the millions of voters that are coming in right now. Will you fight for this country for goodness sake or get out of the way and let somebody else do it? Um, I just wish that there was a little bit more timing. I wish that everyone waited to the end. We knew this thing was coming. This train, we've punted every couple weeks. This is the 2024 funding. It was due last October. The idea that this funding was a, came out of nowhere. Get your ducks in a row. You want to stage a coup? You should have done it. Make it clear to Johnson. I mean, I just, I agree. Just Joe, I'm reading your, yeah. I mean, the timing was horrible. Um, Anyway, and, and and again, of all the issues, this is the one where I'm like, guys, this is what we're supposed to be fighting for. They're, they're supposed to care about. Um, let me just, uh, I mentioned that. I want to um, I want to talk about RFK in a minute and get your feedback. Before I do that, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, the Sunday shows. I want to start with ABC. So you remember last week, Nancy Mace was on with George Stephanopoulos on this week and she schooled him. She's like, I mean, she, he thought he had, he was going to, whatever you want to sneak attack on her, surprise her. And then she just came at him and was like, you're shaming me. I'm a rape victim. She brought it to him. Now, of course, all of his buddies in the media covered for him because that's what they do. But she she got the better of him. So the JV host, John Carl, was in there today. He had Marco Rubio on. And he started playing these videos of Marco Rubio from the 2016 trail. And, you know, saying, okay, look at what you called Trump. And Rubio looks at him and goes, yeah, we're in the middle of a campaign. That's what you do. And you move on. And everything was better now under Trump. And Jonathan Carl was so indignant. What do you, I can't believe. I mean, it was literally like he was going to cry. Like a big baby. You can't honestly mean that. And, and Rubio came to play. 
He embarrassed him. He schooled him. He was just running and started and like, okay, this is better. This is better. This is better. And, and Jonathan started doing that. You can't possibly do. So Rubio starts going in about how everything foreign policy wise second, but I mean, he goes North Korea, Hamas, or John, the Carl's like, you can't blame him for everything that happened. And he goes, yeah, I can. He was like, boom. Yeah, you can. Um, so Mark Kelly, I'm not defeated. I'm just telling you, I actually, I I'm ready to fight and I want people to understand what's at stake and what we should be fighting for and we shouldn't be fighting for. I get that there are deals in Washington, especially when you're the minority of the branches of government. But this is one we should tell our folks, hey, we're willing to sacrifice. We're willing. We want to have your back. And are we willing to call those guys up and say, we got your back on this? Um, the funny part is, so he plays this whole thing about what he said about Trump. And Rubio goes, how come you never ask this stuff about Kamala Harris and her accusing? I mean, she that's what she said during the debate, right? Remember that? She went after Joe Biden accused him of being a racist when it came to busing. They had an interview with Kamala. They never brought that up, did they? No way. They don't ask her about Biden's age. They don't ask her about the accusations that she threw his way during the campaign. Nope. We only do that one way. I got to be honest with you, though. After Nancy Mace last weekend and Marco Rubio this week, I just don't. I think at a certain point, Republicans going on ABC's this week or any of the Sunday shows, because I watched them all today. I mean, at least the network ones I did. And it's an absolute waste of time. An absolutely waste of time. They are so hateful of Trump. They hate the man. They hate everyone who supports him. And they want you to apologize for everything that you've possibly said or for voting for him. I mean, they, it, it, and it's such patty cake. When you watch the interview that they have with the Democrat and then the one that they have with the Republican, it's night and day. Democrats, it's like, it's literally patty cake. They're like, tell me why you think, um, you know, it's worth blah, 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 blah. And then the Republican comes on and they'll say, how can you possibly defend Donald Trump? Aren't you concerned about this? Now, the one that um, takes the cake, if you haven't seen it. So news came out, Ronna McDaniel, former RNC chair, signs a deal with NBC. Okay. I know all of you might not agree with him. And by the way, Regina, I get it. Uh, you don't watch them all. That's why you're here, hopefully. And that's why I started the show is because I'm t I, the, you don't always see it behind the scenes, but no matter where you are, there's corporate overlords, there's a, lawyers, certain topics, certain guests you can't do. Here, as long as I get you guys, I got a show. I have a forum. I have a platform. And that's why we're on YouTube, Rumble, Apple, Spotify. So you can't cancel us. I'm reading um, Take On Style. I get my news from YouTube and Truth. Yeah, great. Thank you for being here. I'll cover everything you need to know. Trust me. <laughs> Seriously, though, why? Why? I mean, these guys are so dishonest. So anyway, get back to this. Now, here's my deal. It's a free country. If Rana wants to sign on with NBC News or whomever, I don't really care. She can do it. I can't believe she'd do it because I think it's going to be painful. But okay, you know what? It's a free country. Go do what you want. Um, okay, so she signs on. Then so she starts this interview off today with Kristen Welker on Meet the Press. And Welker starts off the thing by saying, I need viewers to know that I had no idea when we set this interview up that she was going to be signing on as an NBC contributor. And she goes, this is a news interview. And I'm thinking to myself, well, which ones aren't news interviews then? Because aren't you admitting? By the way, RL, that's why I'm telling you this, because I get it. A lot of you gave up watching these shows. I wish I could. I think it's an addiction. I can't help myself sometimes. I work out while I do it. So it's not like I'm uh, just doing it, like sitting on a couch. I try to be productive, like trying to burn it all off. Anyway, so Christian Welker's like, you know, this is a news interview. And I'm thinking to myself, who says that? Because now I'm wondering what's not a news interview, Kristen. So... She asked the question, and it was one thing after Rana. Rana, do you want to apologize for this? Rana, are you ashamed that you did this? Rana, how did Trump do this? Are you sure that he did? I mean, it was just one thing after another. It was like, it was painful watching it. I mean, literally painful. And it just drags on. 
one thing after another. But you said this. Do you want to apologize for that? Then you did this. Do you want to apologize for that? How mean is Trump? Did he hurt you? I mean, it was it, it was pathetic, to be honest with you. So it wraps up. And Rana's trying to do like her whatever. And I want to play you guys. So she brings in the panel. And the former fired host, Chuck Todd, um, is the first one on the panel to respond. And let me see if I can get this up because you got to see this. And I, I know you don't watch it. And I, I do it so that you can, but you've got to see this. Here we go. Let's play it. Deal with the elephant in the room. Yeah. I think our bosses owe you an apology for putting you in this situation because I don't know what to the believe. The bosses owe you an apology. By NBC News. Well, I have no idea whether any answer she gave to you was because she didn't want to mess up her contract. Um, she wants us to believe that she was speaking for the RNC when the RNC was paying for it. So she has she has credibility issues that she still has to deal with. Yeah. Is she speaking for herself or is she speaking on behalf of who's paying her? But once at the RNC, she did say that, hey, I'm speaking for the party. I get that. That's part of the job. So what about here? I, I will say this. I think your interview uh, did a good job of exposing, I think, many of the contradictions. And look, there's a reason why there's a lot of journalists at NBC News uncomfortable with this, because many of our professional dealings with the RNC over the last six years have been met with gaslighting, <gasps> have been met with character assassination. Oh. So it is, it, you know, that's where you begin here. And so um, <laughs> when NBC made the decision to give her NBC News's credibility, you got to ask yourself, what does she bring NBC News? And when we make deals like this, and I've been at this company a long time, you're doing it for access, access to audience. Sometimes it's access to an individual. Mm -hmm. um, and we can have a de journalistic ethics debate about that. And I, it, I, 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 I'm willing to have that debate. And if you told me we were hiring her as a technical advisor to the Republican convention, I think that would be certainly um, defensible. If you told me we're we're talking to her, but let's let's see how she does in some interviews and maybe vet her with actual journalists inside the network. See see if it's a two way mm. what she can bring the network. So I do think, unfortunately, this interview is always going to be looked through the prism of right. who is she speaking for, right? right? Well, I, I think you did everything you could do. You got put into an impossible situation yeah. booking this interview, and then all of a sudden the rugs pull out from under you. You find out she's being paid to show up. That's it's unfortunate for this program, but I am glad you did the best that you could. And that's why the three of us are on here to, to try to um, bolster that editorial independence. Why? Okay. I don't even know where to start. And I get it. I'm reading the comments. I know you guys don't watch these things. I get it. And I don't blame you. And I, I wish I could get over what I, my, my illness here on watching some of these, but just stop for a second. Who the hell does he think he is telling the executives what to do, whether you like Rana or not, or whatever, the idea that he's like, oh, they owe you an apology. <laughs> apology for what? You're an employee. Get it through your head. It's not your network. And the idea that you have to do this, listen, you, you guys, I, I mean, uh, Jen Psaki, what, what, does, she, does he ever have to worry about her? She's getting paid. Simone Sanders, Kamala Harris's former uh, comms director, she's on their payroll. They both have shows. So, But he's never been concerned about anyone on the left, has he? Interesting, isn't it? This outreach, and he's pissed because the RNC has fought back him for the last few years. Who the hell is he? He apologized to her. I hope they fire him. They've already pulled the show from him. Good for them. I mean, it is pretty pathetic now, and I know that it's, I mean, it literally is a shell of itself. But if you're an executive at NBC and you let that stand, you are the ultimate wuss. The idea that your former host goes back on the air and acts like he's somehow Kristen Welker's saver. I, they owe you an apology. She's a big girl. Who are you to tell her she had like, and, and whether Ron is speaking for herself because she's getting paid again, you have contributors. All of those other people are contributors that you have on all the time. You don't seem to share their concern about who they're speaking for. Do you, you only care because it's Trump. That's the only reason you care. It's pretty unbelievable. It is so unbelievable. But I will be honest with you. If they don't reprimand that dude, I mean, I know they already pulled his show and fired him from the hosting jobs. But my God, if you are an executive at NBC 
and say, I don't care what a decision is. You don't tell me how to act and you don't go on our air and say that we owe one of our other employees an apology, then they are pathetic. Pathetic. So let's keep an eye on what happens because I think at this point it'd be fun. Uh, Basic Bob is saying, I watched this live and actually started yelling at the TV. I know. That's what I did. I was like, who? I cannot believe this. The idea that like, of course, the, the, see, they get so upset. The RNC has been fighting back, and we've asked her for months to come on the show. Da, 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 da. You're right. I'd have to get paid to go on, too. I wouldn't go on that damn show. Watch that interview with Ronda. They treat Republicans, anyone who likes Trump, horribly. Why would you go on the show? Now, I get it. She wants to make a living. I Listen, this is America. Go on your show. Do what you want to do. I went independent because it's easier to do this with you guys. I got great sponsors. You guys have helped me build this. This is great. And I don't have to worry about, Ooh, what, what does the lawyer say? What are the, I mean, I have sponsors. They know who I stand. They love the show. They love the growth. You guys have been awesome. Please do, by the way, subscribe right now. As And, and by the way, if you do have a super chat, let me know. Click up there. I'll, I'll answer it. But go, make sure you're subscribing. Spread the word. Let's grow. Let's do this the right way. Because that's what happens. NBC goes, oh, we have to give you money. And then you have to question. You've never, ever, Chuck, worried about anyone else who's getting paid on NBC, have you? Not one. Not one person. But you care now. And that's why you got fired. Anyway. Um, anyway, I want to get on because there's an, there's a couple other things happening this week. Um that I want to I want to touch base with. Number one, I mentioned the Trump stuff on Tuesday. Uh, Bobby Kennedy is set to unveil his choice. He's going to have an event in Oakland. There's a name that keeps getting floated now. Her name is Nicole Shanahan. She's a tech attorney out in the Bay Area, um, and everyone's going, "Whoa, who is this?" I don't know who the heck she is, but I do know that she's got a ton of money, and I have a feeling that that is what's driving this. Oh, by the way, Sunflowers, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I'm reading a bunch of these. Um, thank you, by the way, Regina, for subscribing. Oh, and I, I, thanks to Stephen Gardner. I know a lot of you came over from him. He's been awesome. He's just He's got a great show. I was honored. Second, third time I've been on with him. Uh, he's a great platform and uh, insightful, has great guests, and, and is really – uh, been kind enough to have me on. And I appreciate that. And I know a lot of you came over from his show. So I appreciate that. Deborah, thank you as well. Um, Ronnie, of course, uh, you've been awesome. Uh, appreciate all your support. But look, I want to know what you guys think. I'm looking at the comments now. I mean, I don't know that anyone really cares. I've never thought that vice presidents mattered anyway. I mean, let's be honest. Like, who cares? Joseph, thank you. Um, I don't really, I, I don't think it matters anyway. So I don't know. But the idea that she's bringing a boatload of money is good. Now, just so you know, in some states, he needs to have a running mate when he wants to get on the ballot. So that's driving why he's doing this at the time that he is. I don't think anyone's going to be voting for him because of who his vice president is. And that's why no one really cares whether you know her, know what she stands for, or whatever, because you're voting for him. Um, so. Just know that that's probably what's driving a lot of this. Um, yeah, Joseph's saying, like I said before, VP is a great gig. I mean, seriously, you get your own house. The vice president's mansion is off Massachusetts Avenue, kind of down Embassy Row. I don't know, what, a mile and a half maybe from the White House? You got this huge gate around it. No, There's no public tours. Great house, nice pool. Um, you know, I always think that's the greatest gig in the world. I mean, seriously, you go and tend stuff. You have to go, you know, to events and there's no real responsibilities unless the Senate is that tight. Um, Walter Boyd, now that Northern Ireland, good to see. I, you know, I was there Friday. Uh, well, not Northern Ireland, I was down in Dublin. Although I do, I am trying to get, uh, I would love to get up to Belfast. I didn't realize how close it was to Dublin. And that is definitely on my list the next time I need to get to Belfast. Uh, really excited to check it out. Um, so anyway, I will be int intrigued to see what this does for RFK. Like I said, it helps him get on a couple other ballots. But you guys, if you're watching the show, you know this. And I'm going to dive deeper into this in the coming weeks. All that matters is the eight states, like the battleground states. He's not going to win Hawaii. He's not going to. I mean, so 
you know, we'll see how many states he gets on right now. He's on like four. Um, Utah, Hawaii, I think Nevada. Um, by the way, Clownfish, thank you. Got the sweater in Dublin. I had I had a list of things that I was there for like t- literally 24 hours in and out. Quick, great, fun event uh, over there. Uh, but I had to get back. And uh, I had a list of like my wife gave me, here's what the kids need when you're over there. And I didn't, you know, I was like, oh, look at that. A nice Irish sweater. And it's cold here, at least for another week in Virginia. And then it'll, I think spring kicks in. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to wear this to church today, Palm Sunday. And, uh, you know, it's probably the last time that I'll be able to wear an Irish sweater. So thank you. Um, and you like the Sean Spicer pillow. That's nice, huh? It is a nice set. That blanket, I've got a couple of those, by the way, in case you're interested. Those are uh, not interested, like you can have them, but uh, those are from Trump's inauguration. There was this limited run of, you know, blankets on the uh, inauguration. One of them has my name. Um, the, I think it was one of these White House Historical Association or somebody did them. They were cool. Um, anyway, um, Joseph's asking about elections. I will tell you this election integrity is huge. We had a great episode with Ashley, um, with, uh, excuse me, Reagan Reese from the daily caller on the other day. If you didn't see it, it's the Thursday show, Reagan Reese, daily caller, Natalie Winters of Bannon's war room and, uh, Tony Katz of the Tony Katz show. And Reagan did some amazing reporting about where we are election integrity wise. I'm going to tell you the, the good part and the bad part. On the on a lot of the poll watching things, I think we're in a much better place. On the drop boxes, early voting, massive absentee, kind of whatever, I don't feel that good. Um, that being said, look, we've got to overwhelm this vote. We've got to get flood the zone. And in the coming weeks, I just mentioned um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like a map to 270 because right now, I, it's pretty much like in terms of who's in what what column, you get about 240 to 250 with Trump and you get about that with Biden a little more, a little less. Um, meaning that like these six to eight battleground states are where it's at. Remember, you only have to get to 260, 270. And by the way, let me just give you a preview of something I want to talk to you about. I, I know this is a little nutty, but there's a bunch of scenarios where it's a tie. 269 and 269. Well, what happens? It gets thrown to the House of Representatives. The new House of Representatives, the one that gets sworn in, every state gets a vote, meaning California gets one vote. So you look at their delegation, they will vote Democrat, right? There's like 40, I think they have 52 seats. So 40-ish are Dems, 10 are Republicans. So their vote is, right? Democrat. Florida, I think they have four Democrats left or whatever. So they'll vote all the Republicans. So Florida's vote you know, you just go down the list. Rhode Island, two Democrats, that votes. So they're one vote. So all 50, there are 50 votes. Every state based on their delegation in the house gets one vote for president. Here's the kicker. And I think by the way, uh, that will be okay. Where it gets tricky is the Senate gets to vote for a vice president. <gasps> oh, I didn't see that one coming. Did you? Anyway, We'll have a further discussion on this later, probably in the next couple of weeks, how to get to 270 and the consequences and what's happening. But it's the it's the map of the next Congress that matters. So I'll do a little bit of map. Like California is still going to put its vote. Democrat, Florida will still be a Republican vote. Rhode Island will still be Dem. Massachusetts will be Dem. Georgia will be Republican. So I'll break it down for you because even though it's the next Congress, I don't know that it will matter that much in terms of the delegations because – there's really like Alabama still going to have a majority Republican vote, Ohio majority Republican votes. You look at the number of states. I think we should be good, but the Senate could be interesting. You could literally, if you, I'll do the math because I don't want to even speculate now, but this could be a really, um, yes. And DeWitt is saying, shouldn't we be concerned? Here's the thing. Dems in the media will tell you there's no cheating because we don't see any. Well, if you give someone a license when they come into the country and then you need the license to get to vote, you can't prove something that you can't. I mean, like they've given illegals all of the tools. And what you'll tell you is, well, it's illegal to do that. Oh, so the people who broke into the country illegally were now supposed to believe that they're going to follow the law. Right. I mean, 
it doesn't make sense, does it? So I'm just telling you that like there is so much more um, here. By the way, this is going to sound off topic, but trust me when I say I have a reason why. You all heard the news probably by now about Kate Middleton, Princess of Wales, and her unfortunate cancer diagnosis. Well, a bunch of these numbnuts like Stephen Colbert were off speculating that maybe there's like nefarious reasons and trouble in the mayor. Which it's just so inappropriate. And just so you're clear, Stephen Colbert this week is going to be hosting a fundraiser with Mindy Kaling. Um, Bill Clinton, Obama, and Biden in New York. Now, you would think, oh, well, he's going to be, uh, you know, that's going to be a problem. No. Um, all right. Echo36, thank you for your super chat. Uh, DJT to Dems, I won't abridge speech. I won't weaponize government to target you and your politics. You want rich, strong, doing whatever you do. Um, yeah. I mean, Trump's got to get in there and just make it clear, like, hey, I'm all for free speech. This is what's happening on uh, on my side. I agree. Trump, this is, look, let me just be clear with you guys. Um, I, I Yeah, he's saying, I, Echo 36, wish you would talk directly to them. I, I agree with you. This election is Trump's to lose. That's a fact. He's leading in every one of the eight battleground states. This is Trump's to lose. He has the RNC completely taken over. He has the team, the best team that I've seen in of the three cycles and the issues domestically, foreign policy wise, and then Biden just on tape every day. By the way, Carter's saying, yes, vote early. I don't care. Look, everyone's like, I got this problem. I get it. Look at what happened in Georgia. If we don't get out there and vote, they win. And I'm seriously, guys, like I know people say like, oh, this election's important. This is it. The woke BS that defend the defund the police, the border. This is it. We don't. The, the country is hanging by a thread. It's, I, and I don't mean that. That's. I don't think that's an exaggeration. Paul saying, "Yeah, they could still cheat again." Sure, but so get out there. Let's overwhelm the vote. Vote early. Go down to the precinct to your to your election of office if you want. Whatever you feel most secure. But here's the thing: that you guys have to understand been doing elections for 30 years. You chase voters that are what they call high propensity. So if you vote in two or more elections over a four a four cycle period, people, the the folks in the campaign believe call you a high propensity voter. You're somebody that will vote. If you haven't cast that vote, they'll chase you. They'll send you mail. They'll call you. They'll, you know, maybe have a door knocker come by. Hey, do you have a plan to vote? You're costing the campaign precious dollars. So do whatever it takes to make you feel secure in your vote. Go down to the election of, you know, office itself if you have to do it. Go use it, whatever it is. I don't care. But you need to do that. Second, be a poll watcher. Get involved. This is like the TSA thing. Say something, see something. I can't tell you, over six years, the RNT, how many times I got a phone call home? And they'd say, oh, my God, you wouldn't believe what happened in my precinct. I'd say, great, did you document it? Nope. Imagine calling the police and being like, there's a guy, he's committing a crime down the street. Okay, what's he look like? I don't know. I can't remember. He's not there. I didn't get a description. What do you want the police to do? That's what we need to do. We have to have enough people there to monitor. So volunteer, get involved in your local precinct. It's a day. There's a lot at stake. So please do that. Please get involved. Uh, Regina, thank you. Uh, they're going to cheat and illegals are going to vote. And when I do vote in person and when do I vote in person early or on November 3rd, I, I am very concerned. As I said, this is why we need to engage in the process. Vote early, do it, bank the vote. We need to make sure that every resource is available for that campaign to go out there and target people who are lower propensity voters, meaning people who might not vote as often, but who believe in what President Trump has done and the agenda. And if they're wasting money chasing you, then we can't go after people who are new potential voters that we can overwhelm. We need to win big. 
No more of this 10,000 crap. So, you know, let's, let's, let's do this. Um, get out there and do it. And then be, be vigilant, be vigilant, get involved. If you see somebody voting illegally, if you see them not having the proper ID, document it. But anecdotal evidence doesn't work. It doesn't work in a court of law and it doesn't do this. Mary, thank you very much. I'm going to put my glasses on and read what you said here. It says, because there's a little thing. Thanks for being you. Uh, you're very welcome. Thanks for, for your support, for everything that you're doing. Um, I appreciate this. This means a lot. You know, as I said a minute ago, when I left Newsmax, I had a choice to stick around for another couple of years or take a chance. And I thought, let's do it. And it's because of this, because you guys and your support and encouragement that I thought we could do this. And this has been phenomenal. I've enjoyed it. Um, getting to know people and having these Sunday night events and other, we did live for um, Super Tuesday. We did live for State of the Union. Thinking outside the box, covering topics and people and thoughts that you guys think are important, getting guests on and, and doing things that we might not be allowed to do at a network. So thank you guys for that. I appreciate it. And spreading the word. I bump into people now. When I was over in Ireland uh, Friday, some people were like, I watch your show. And I'm like, really? I mean, it's just, and that's what's great is that um, it was amazing, by the way. Turn on the um, TV in the hotel. There's no CNN. There's no Fox. There's RTE. I think they made it on one BBC channel. So if you're living, I mean, I get people on the chat here. Ireland, uh, Australia, New Zealand. You can watch this wherever you are. No cost. You just have to access to the internet. So if you got somebody that's dying, you know, hey, I want to get my fix. Every day we do this show. Six o'clock Eastern, it streams. Anyway, I appreciate it. Um, but thank you guys for, for everything that you're doing. Um, just remember, getting out there and being part of the process is what matters. If you want to sit back and complain, you know, you're allowed to. That's the beautiful thing about America. We have a right to do it. But too much is at stake right now for our country um, and finding ways to get involved and, and talk to your neighbors and your colleagues, explaining to them what's happening. You know, you think about the case that Marco Rubio made today on ABC. He was phenomenal. He just laid out very systematically the differences between President Trump and President Biden domestically, our economy, energy, the border, and then in foreign policy. He wasn't rude. He didn't yell. He made a very compelling case. And that's what we need to do to get out there and be involved in the process, share that message with our neighbors, explain them what's involved, especially if you live in one of those eight battleground states, because that's where this is going to come down to. And I'm telling you, folks, I, I get that there are concerns about drop boxes and mailing out absentee ballots. Figure out what you can do to get involved. Talk to your state legislatures. Talk to your election officers. Make sure that they're following the laws and the regulations. But don't sit on your hands. We lost two races in Georgia because of that. And I'm just telling you, we wouldn't have the people in office that we do now the nominations that Biden sent through if we'd had two extra senators. When President Trump gets in, he needs a Republican House and a Republican Senate. And I've seen too much infighting in the last 30 days. I get it. We don't, we're not perfect. We could be doing more. But for goodness sakes, too much is at stake to fight with each other. We need a bigger majority. We need to be able to get things done. We need to be able to say, great, yep, we'll fight for the border. We'll fight to make sure we keep fentanyl out and terrorists out and all this stuff. We shouldn't be having to negotiate it. Think about this. If we had a Republican Senate, two more seats, we wouldn't be having this discussion. There would be a, a, a Republican effort to say, Mr. President, here's what you have to do. Chuck Schumer and those guys want to talk about the broken immigration system, not the border security issue. That's their code word for not talking about this stuff. Anyway, um, we have a great show lined up all week, and I know it's Holy Week, uh, 
So thank you for, uh, for sticking with us all week. It's going to be big. We've got a lot to talk about. As I said, think about this. Trump's two cases in New York are going to be important. What, what happens to that Alvin Bragg case? How does he come up with the money or not? And what are the repercussions? I'm telling you, I mean, if, if Attorney General Letitia James comes after him, <laughs> Katie barred the door, baby. Because knowing that he has the money, which we all know he does, while it's on appeal and, and trying to liquidate assets or seize assets will not go over well. Maybe in New York City. I don't even know there, though. There's a line at which the question is, what is she willing to cross? So that's going to happen, both of those things. Then you've got this RFK issue. Who does he pick and what are the consequences? What's the outcome of that? Like I said, I think part of it, remember, is ballot access. He wants to get on a couple more, and they require you to fill out the both the, both the, the president and the vice president, your running mate. So he has to do it. And I think it's a smart move to get things. I will be interested to see, polling-wise, where this thing breaks down. I'm not convinced it all helps Biden. For the most part, I am, because at, at the end of the day, Robert Kennedy is a Democrat. He's a liberal Democrat. Big enviro. He's pro-choice. Um, I don't think he comes strong with guns. Yes, the vax issue is big for him. And I know for a lot of Republicans, conservatives. But at the end of the day, he's a Democrat. He's a Kennedy Democrat. Let's not forget that. So that's going to be important to watch. And then I think the no labels thing is going to be important. Um, and then how things break out. I know the House is out on recess right now, but there's. I think we're going to hear a little bit more. We we expect to have some great guests this week to break down where the temperature is in the House. Um, so that's all that's happening. Plus, there's a lot of other stuff happening in our world. I mean, this Candace Owens Daily Wire thing, I'll talk about it this week. Holy smokes. I mean, can't say I follow that like religiously, but I was intrigued to see how this thing goes or how this thing went down. Um so the Colbert fundraiser, again, how does this thing this in New York, after what he said about the Princess of Wales and, and their marriage, which is not funny, I, I hope he pays a price for this, but it's amazing he's going to moderate this discussion with Biden, Obama. Um, and there's a, a, a fake video or a fake live video that Biden did. I'll, I'll show it to you this week. Um and then we'll discuss a bunch of other uh, of the political news of the week when we when we get into the show. But um, do me a favor. If you haven't already, please, a lot of you, I can't tell you how impressed I am with it. No, holy smokes, I'm still trying to get through. Let me see. Uh, Echo 36, thanks. Another, geez. J6, COVID lessons, legal and policy technicality matters. Bold, uncancelable pro bono attorneys acting fast and hard are critical right now. That's that's really good point. Um, I know. Um, the RNC has put a lot of effort into election integrity and um, getting those lawyers lined up, getting them ready to go is, is important um, to protect the vote ahead of. And I think this is where, um, you know, if I, if I'm critical of Trump's campaign from last time, it's that they were behind the curve on a lot of these issues. Well, I agree. Getting a lot of these attorneys lined up is important um, ahead of time. And, and, and um, I think they're going to thanks again for your support. Uh, greatly appreciate all you've done. Uh, Carter, I saying that he's poll watch, knocked on doors in Georgia. He now lives in North Carolina. Two things about that. One, first of all, thank you, Carter. Getting involved in the process is important. Um, when I, I talked about Reagan Reese's reporting for the Daily Caller, she noted the RNC was under a consent decree from the mid 80s all the way until a cycle ago, meaning that they had been sued, this case relating to how they had in New Jersey, dissuaded black voters, whatever. It doesn't matter. And the DNC kept suing to keep it going in perpetuity. Finally, the RNC got out of it. Why did that matter? It prohibited election day activities at polls. Now they're out of it. They can engage in a way that they haven't before. So I appreciate what Carter's doing. But but also, if you are a, a um, you live in a non-battleground state, then consider helping out in a battleground state. Nevada, Wisconsin, Michigan, New Hampshire, which is one that I believe in, uh, Pennsylvania, the list goes on, Georgia, Arizona, 
see if you can help in some way. Um, and go do that. I'm just looking through some of these things. Um, Zimmer girl, thank you. Appreciate your kind words. Regina's in New York. It's dangerous. Yeah, no kidding. And these guys, by the way, they mock crime. They mock the impact that immigration has. Good for them. If that's what they really think, that this isn't a big deal, I feel bad for them. Um, <laughs> by the way, Echo 36 Spicer and Owens would make an amazing daily show. Unfortunately, I don't think I've tried. I think I, I don't know if Candace is still in Nashville. I think she is. So that would make geographically a little challenging, but uh, I, I will be interested to see where she lands. Obviously, you might have seen Dave Rubin's prediction. He thinks that she's teaming up with Tucker Carlson. We'll see. I just think more voices, more independent voices are the way to go. And uh, so we're coming up on a, an hour. I can't believe how many of you are on here live. This is amazing. Um, I hope for those of you who are Christian or Catholics that you have a unbelievable Holy Week, uh, Passover. I mean, all of this, this is a really amazing time for, for so many of us. Um, and I hope we have an opportunity to reflect on what's important and, uh, and what, what matters, what our priorities are. So, um, <laughs> I love Tucker. Yes. Tucker's a great guy. <laughs> I love Tucker too. Uh, and I'm glad to see more and more people going independent. It's fabulous. And I appreciate all of your support. As I said before, please make sure that you are subscribing. Um, and it's for those of you who are on the YouTube channel, I appreciate it. Thank you that for rumble. Awesome. But please think about all of the above. It's all free. It's my gift to you. But the more you're subscribed to all the channels, one, it's a backup. I told you the other day when we did that segment with Isabel Brown and we're talking about abortion and they, they suppressed it. It was unbelievable. We just had a conversation about the legal aspects of Roe v. Wade and how it's going to come up as an, as an election issue. And YouTube was like, no bueno. So we got to be careful. We don't know when that's coming. So one, it's a helpful check for you to subscribe to all those platforms Two, Just to be brutally honest, it's super helpful to me. Because when sponsors look at the show, and I've been blessed, Delta Rescue, Bishop Gold, Four Patriots, they're all awesome. They've been so phenomenal to us, and so many more, by the way. I apologize if I, the wellness group, um, have been awesome. Thank you to, to our sponsors. I hope you, in the links that we put in the show descriptions, check them out. They're great people. I always tell you, I use every one of the products that are on our show. I invest in Bishop Gold. I love Delta Rescue and what Leo Grillo has done as an animal lover. Um, I've got a four Patriots generator right outside that door right there. So because of them and because of your support, I've been able to do this. So when you support the work that we're doing and just merely subscribe and share it, it's super helpful. We are just a few hundred short of a hundred thousand on YouTube. So when you help us, it Chris, echo three, six continues to be a huge supporter. Thank you very much. Um, so um, Ronnie, I'm, I'm reading out. Thank you guys for all of your stuff. Um, but we're coming up in an hour. There's probably some basketball games on my, my bracket's completely gone. So I figured, Hey, why not? Let's chat with you guys. Um, next Sunday's obviously Easter. So probably spend that time with my family and, uh, but we'll be back to do this again. I love this stuff. As I said, one of the big things coming up is I want to break down the, the map to 270 and the options and the alternatives, especially within the context of those eight battleground states. Plus, what are those scenarios? Why is it important to have a Republican House if, God forbid, there was ever a tie? Again, that just covers the president, right? The vice president gets selected in the Senate, but we need to know the rules of the game. We need to be prepared. We need to know what we can be doing in advance. So uh, Regina saying Stephen Gardner has a live. No way. Is he competing with me right now? Regina, I hope not. If not, I, if he is, I appreciate you being here. But as I said earlier, I appreciate all the support that uh, Stephen Gardner has given me. Uh, he's been phenomenal. And uh, if you've come over here from Stephen's channel, uh, he's a. I, I love the content that he puts out there and, and the work that he does. And um, I welcome you to to my channel. Obviously, hopefully, you have plenty of time to to watch both. So. Um, Pat, you too. Have a great week. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you tomorrow uh, on the show, 6 o'clock at stream, 7 o'clock on the First Network. Um, Sylvia, thanks for finding me. Um, good. 
She's on YouTube all the time, just for us. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow, six o'clock, right back here. Subscribe to all those channels. Please, please, please go over to Apple Podcasts right now. Maybe it's halftime on one of the games. I don't know. Hit that one as well. That's always great. And then thanks for sharing this with your friends and colleagues, whatever. Maybe watch an episode over Easter. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much.